I don't think it's an unfair case, though, to say, look, I have put on the table, President Biden put on the table more uh, tough border restrictions than any Democratic president in history, came to Congress, Republicans agreed with him, and then a bunch of Republicans walked away for political reasons. So I think he should do both. I think he should do the policy. I think he should say, here's some of the things we've already done. Here are things we're going to do more of. We need to get more resources. We need to get shorter wait times. We need to get all of those things that were in this bill. I hope he says all of that, but he should remind people that he came to the table and said yes, and conservative Republicans walked away from it to help Donald Trump. That's not an unfair thing to remind voters it's of. What we- I have more to play where that came from for you. A second clip there of Marie Harf, who was speaking a little bit of truth on Fox News, and it relates to the conversation around the border. One of the issues that Republicans have made clear they want to make central in this upcoming election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden is the southern border accusing Biden of mismanaging it. And it's pretty fascinating to watch how very quickly that being something that benefits them is or at least should crumble (laughs) because of the whole saga we talked a lot about where Biden, Democrats in the Senate, even some Republicans in the Senate negotiated a border bill that even the Border Patrol said, the Border Patrol Union said, was one of the best things they've been able to see Congress uh, bring forward in a really long time. And so the Border Patrol endorsed it and the Republicans killed it in the House of Representatives, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson refusing to even take up that piece of legislation because overtly, as Trump has made clear and people like uh, Nels, Troy Nels made clear, They wanted to hurt Biden politically. They didn't want to give Biden a win. And they understood that it would be harder to accuse Biden of not acting to address issues at the southern border if they were actively implementing solutions with Joe Biden. And so for purely political reasons, they shot down a bill that would do all the things they've been asking for. Maybe not all of them, but many of the things they've been asking for and proved once again something we've known. They're not serious about governance. They're not serious about any of the things they say they care about in terms of policy issues. It's just about politics and power, not at all about people. And so the difference between the Democratic Party's governance priorities and the Republican Party's governance priorities was made so clear in such stark uh, terms during that whole debacle. And so now as we are in this election season, every time this topic comes up of the southern border, this has to be the message, and I'll play more for you here. No, it wasn't. That's a, that's explain a lie. To it's it was, explain to so, us how it was not true. Explain to us how it would have fixed the problem. Okay, so there's a number of things it would have done, including greatly reducing the number, the amount of time people waited before they either got adjudicated and deported. It would have put more resources and more money towards the border patrol. That's why Republicans negotiated and it. And he can do that with his bully pulpit. Republicans negotiated it. He can do that with his bully pulpit. And, and so, why and so can do Donald it. Trump came out and said, I want to run on this. He said this publicly. We Mar- all saw it, guys. Marie. And so Republicans said, no, we're going to not give the president all of that Cheryl she does not yeah and similar to what we see with Jessica Tarlov on the five and elsewhere whenever somebody starts saying some accurate things on Fox News they very quickly get shouted at I have one more clip of one of the other hosts breaking some bad news to Republicans but it is stunning stunning I've been really having a hard time processing it and I've admitted to maybe being a little bit naive on this because this whole thing confused me a lot. I know Republicans constantly elect Republicans, that is, act in bad faith. I know they aren't really serious about addressing solutions and care way more about fear mongering about problems. In general sense, I get that. But watching this play out was still shocking. Watching the issue that they have been proclaiming to care the most about be the subject at hand for a potential set of solutions that are many of them wish list items for Republicans, and then they block it after one of the most conservative Senate, uh, Senate Republicans negotiated it just to allow Trump to run on that in the election. That is crazy. And then they're now saying, as we talked about in a different segment, that they won't support aid to Ukraine or some of them saying they won't fund the government if legislation is is in there or funding isn't in there to 
uh, address the border. But, but y'all were the ones blocking it. What? It's crazy. And that's the new line. We won't do anything on almost anything unless we quote unquote secure the border. But they're the ones preventing action on the border. Ridiculous. Um, and then to spend years advocating for legislative action on the border, then flip around and say, no, 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 Biden could have done it within the powers he already has. Whatever it is, he could have acted properly on the border with the powers he already has. But they've been advocating for legislation, presumably because that's not true for a really long time. And right now, some of them are saying they need legislation to approve other legislation, but the... <laughs> and then Harris Faulkner there, you heard her say that he could have done it with the bully pulpit. What on this <laughs> green earth, green and blue earth, I guess more accurately. Uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? He could have done it with the bully pulpit. I'm so lost. Okay, here's one more moment from this exchange. Party. So if you think about this, this is a unique election in the sense that we have basically two incumbents. You have Joe Biden, who's running for a second term, and Donald Trump, who's running for a second term, right? And so how did Joe Biden do in South Carolina? 96.2% of the vote. Donald Trump got 60%, and four in 10 voters in the Republican Party said no. Even though they know that the race is pretty much over, that he's going to be the nominee, they still voted against him. Um, that, that is a problem because when he says this is the most united Republican Party he's ever mm. seen, it is not the most united Republican Party. And 59% of those Haley voters say they're not voting for him. That, that is the... And that's on the subject, if we talked about this again in a different segment, but a truly devastating element of the South Carolina primary for Donald Trump. It's not good, number one, to really only have 60% of the voters vote for you in South Carolina, really conservative place, and still only 60% in this Republican primary, 40% going to Nikki Haley. Yeah, you still beat her easily, but that's not anywhere close to Joe Biden's 95 plus percent and the unity in the Democratic Party compared to the Republican Party when they are both sort of running that incumbent sort of candidacy and are perceived that way. Uh, but even more devastating for Trump, is this 59% figure that 59% of Nikki Haley voters say they won't vote for Trump in a general. Uh, that's not good. Here's a clip of Joe Biden responding to something Trump said about the border bill. Were you against the House, um, against the Senate border deal, the bipartisan border? Well, they allow 5,000 people a week, but a lot of people took it a as 5,000 people a day. It made it much better for the opposing side. You know, he just admitted it. He sabotaged our bipartisan deal, bipartisan deal to secure the border because it made it much better for the opposing side. You know who the opposing side is? In this case, it's America. Donald Trump roots against America every chance he gets. He's only in this for himself. So absolutely correct there from Joe Biden. And by the way, the point that Trump was making is just completely wrong. He's just lying. And what Laura Ingram was bolstering, they got this talking point, 5,000 people, they let 5,000 people in. And what they're referring to where that lie came from is a figure that then triggers uh, emergency powers for the president, essentially. And so that's an emergency status. And that then allows for the administration to not hear out certain asylum claims. So it's not about letting in, not processing or whatever they're trying to portray there with that point. Again, it's an emergency status sort of uh, aspect of that bill so another lie there if you put top of your list issues at the southern border whatever you feel like are the main ones to your immigration system more broadly a decades-long issue we've been trying to solve making it more logistically sound and all of that organized um and efficient then your party is not the republican party let's just be clear on that and people need to wake up to that fact and democrats need to go out there and be out front clear on this issue to make sure people know that republicans like fear-mongering about migrants <laughs> that's about it they don't actually want to do anything to implement meaningful solutions that are beneficial they just don't 
Make sure people know that. And make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel.